I'm appalled at what you said on that pod thing. It's disgusting. This is the After the Show podcast. It's where we get honest and real with your ass. So sit back, relax, have a blast, because it's time for the After the Show podcast. Yeah, get into the weekend, baby. Welcome to the Thursday KVJ After the Show podcast. All Pocket. right, all right. Mm-hmm. Is it time to drink yet? Um, Asking for a friend. Yeah, you can uh, You can go for it. I mean, what the <laughs> hell? Even by Thursday, man, it's like, oof, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, starting Wednesday, usually I'm like, oh, gosh, I really think I need a drink. <laughs> I'm trying not to drink every day. Yeah, I know, yeah. If I, like, I, I can make it a Wednesday. I'm like, all right, you made it to Wednesday. Good I, for you. I had yeah. a couple of margaritas on Taco Tuesday. Oh, that's a good day to have them, though. I know. It's great. Half gosh. Price. I love that, man. The margarita, Mexican food thing. Gosh, it's just fantastic. It, it's probably my favorite right now. It is fun. Yeah. Especially when you go for a happy hour deal. Yeah. With inflation mm. the way it is, I yeah. love me a happy hour. Yeah, we always do. Queen and I, we know the places. We got them timed out. And it depends upon whether we get a cocktail or not a lot of times. If we hit her, you know, the nice happy hour deal. If we do, we get a cocktail. If we don't, then we, you know. Don't so, but we know, and we're rushing like the place is on fire. <laughs> like you, you know, I just see us like running. We're knocking people over trying to get in there. <laughs> it's a big deal. Look, no one would blame you with these prices. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Hey, I'm just honestly, I, I feel blessed that we can actually go out to freaking eat, man. Honestly, I just you know so many people and the stories and everything out there because I love it. I love it more than anything, man. Going out to eat, that's just that's my freaking thing. But you know, we talked. Ex- extensively on today's regular show about the prices and it's just it's nuts man it, it really is, is good though to count your blessings if you yes. have them. Yeah, absolutely. I think just for positivity. I I, I know it's hard if, if things yeah. are going negative, mm-hmm. but I, there is something to, just yeah. to be said about that. Yeah, the, it's tough. We go out less than we used to. We definitely have cut back. Um, we really hardly ever drink out now. It, it is rare. That's the big splurge. So we'll we'll drink at home, have cocktails at home. We never used to. And then one day we're like, what are we doing? We're spending so much more drinking outside of the home. It's better to stay home, be alcoholics, than uh, to drive out somewhere and get a drink. I like to be a home alcoholic. I shouldn't be out in public yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking a little bit about that. If you miss it, it's on the uh, tail end of the regular show, just some of the discussions. And one of the things that I had mentioned was Olive Garden and how they now are noticing that. Uh, I, it just goes to show you actually how much research they do on who their clientele is. But they said that um, they got more people that make over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year now than make under seventy five. And so the Olive Garden, I guess, is kind of flipped. But some people are not real flattering on Darden restaurants. They had the Longhorn Steakhouse. They also had the Cheddars. And I was talking about the Cheddars in Wellington. And, man, I got a lot of comments on that. I guess I haven't really paid attention. I mean, I do go up State Route 7 almost weekly. Uh, Don said, yeah, that Cheddars in Wellington closed no notice a couple months ago. So I, I didn't even notice. It, I mean, look, it's got the right buzzword for me. Cheddars? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Like I said, I, I went there. It was very mid. I went there. Cheese? Yeah. The whole restaurant is named after cheese? It, it, uh, the only better name of a restaurant would be called Pizza Fucking. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be an interesting name. Yeah. I think I might have some problems with the community. But, Don't bring the kids. Yeah. Maria said, yeah, and that Cheddars was busy, too. That's what threw me off, because I always saw a pretty good crowd there. And my wife and I do that. We always... It's just a fascination of ours, looking at restaurants, what makes them good, how many cars are there. You know, we can always study that. Who knows? Maybe one day it'd be awesome to have a place, but I'm so scared of it because it is terrifying. You go and you look, and I always thought they had a good crowd of cheddars, and then it closes. Why? The uh, it's, it's the same thing that happened to that. Remember that grilled cheese place I was always talking about? Yes. And made that French onion grilled mm-hmm. cheese I loved. It's it was, combining your favorite things. It was, it was packed every single time I would go. No matter what time of day, and I would, I would drive there as a destination to get a s- sacks plural of these grilled cheeses. And then one day I went. I'm talking three days after I went there one time, with it, with it being packed, it turned into a barbecue place. What? I thought, what, the, what the shit is this? Huh. <laughs> and uh, they, I guess, 
I don't know what. Maybe they weren't making enough money because I I think the rent had to have been very expensive. We're talking Boynton okay. on the main strip oh. with all of those other uh, restaurants and shops there. I mean, they. I wonder how some of those restaurants even make money. It is crazy mm-hmm. when you hear what their rent is and what they have to cover just to survive. Yeah, right. It, it, it's Ooh. just, it's terrifying. You know, and, and every, Queen and I will have that fanciful conversation. And that's all it is. I can't imagine I would ever get over the amazing fear I have of ever opening a place that I actually would ever do it. But it's it's a fanciful, fun conversation. What you should do is invest. And, and right. how you would do it yeah. is you would find somebody who knows the business, yeah. both financially mm-hmm. and from food prep. Yeah. You want to find a great chef and you want to find a great business manager. Yeah. And I think if that opportunity presented itself, maybe you it's could invest. That's what I told the queen. I said I would never go in there and try to act like I know how to do it and learn on the job. I'm Don't. not doing that. But if nope. I had solid operators that had a great track record I could come in there and add a little pizzazz yes. to it. And that'd be on the pizzazz Ralston guy. name. Yes. I, I, what's sexy to me is a food truck. Uh, I, 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 don't, no, okay. I, I get the restaurant thing. To me, a food truck is attainable and it's something that I could wrap my head around. And I wouldn't want to be, I'm kind of like you, I don't know anything about a food truck, but I'd want to be but part of the have creative Have your team. face on it. Yes, have yeah. your part of it. ideas, have it be your food, but have somebody else doing the work and you just mm-hmm. are there as the marketing PR. It's, it's your idea and then you have someone execute what yep. you want to have delicious food. I agree. That the would be fun. The thing that's fun about those, they, they get kind of a cultish vibe around them. That uh, El Ruc- on that uh, I was telling you about that taco truck that was, I guess it's kind of like towards Lake Worth. It's right there, uh, I think, just off of military. They've now opened up a an actual restaurant. Nice. Yeah, but they built the vibe and the, the buzz with the food truck. And we went out there for the food truck one night. And they had they would take over a parking lot of like a tire center place after they would close at 5 p.m. Okay. Oh, they would, Sometimes they, they take over uh, banks that are closed. I saw yeah. one at Village Boulevard. The bank uh-huh. was closed at night, obviously, right. and there was all these food trucks Seen in that. there. Yeah, yeah, they do They do that. Those little uh, pickups. And it's kind of cool. It's fun. But, you know, the thing that really happened with the food trucks, too, man, a lot of them are really expensive. Well, it's like you everything. You've seen the prices. Yeah, it, it, everything's expensive. And but the other thing, too, is just like everything, everyone's got a podcast. You saw so, an explosion of food trucks, and then yeah. it got very competitive. Well, all the food costs have gone up, you know, yeah, in, in yeah. preparation for the Crawfish Festival. I was in Restaurant Depot looking at stuff that just two years ago was like 10 12 bucks. Now it's 15 19 Everything mm-hmm. has yeah. gone up across yeah. the board so drastically that mm-hmm. it's it's insanity. It, it, everything's going up. Yeah, it's insane. And uh, obviously, you know, hey, inflation's always happen. It's just the uh, the rate wage. Yeah, your wage rates are not keeping up with the inflation. If it did, and hey. the speed of yeah. inflation, right. inflation's going up way faster than it ever has at any point that I can remember. Yeah, I hope the smarter minds who control all that kind of stuff, and I know there's about eight thousand factors that are going into the inflation that we're seeing now. I hope that, that these smarter minds can figure it out. No, let's dive into that. Let's let's explore. Oh, I, just, terrible now. I know a four, uh, an eight pack of toilet paper should not be mm-hmm. $14, 15 yeah. That is ridiculous. Well, uh, one person said, um, yeah, maybe y'all can do a little mini segment in the future about deals at the store. V's latest YouTube short video about getting a $10 coupon on toilet paper was a huge tip. Good. She said, uh, or Jacob said, yeah, as if you need a bigger workload, it's almost like I'm recommending a new sports show. But <laughs> Well, no, because I'm out there yeah. doing the work right. anyway. And so when I see a great deal like that and I cost compare, which I do on a lot of stuff, I will absolutely mm-hmm. share it because I think there are lots of deals to be had when you join these clubs of the establishment, CVS, Walgreens, uh, I found Chevron, the gas station, yeah. join their club because they're giving a dollar off every gallon of gas for your next five fill-ups. That's huge. So instead of paying three fifty a gallon right now like everybody else, you're paying two fifty a gallon on your next five fill-ups. That is big. I was doing that series, too, with uh, snack foods out there and kind of showing where to go and where not to go because if you like all that stuff, I don't want you paying 
paying ten dollars for soda. No. So mm-hmm. we, uh, if you want to handle those kind of things, I'll handle the snacks and the food for the junk food community. I'll handle it as it comes across my life. But okay. and if I feel, if I find a deal, I will absolutely continue to share. Uh, Melissa, just kind of letting us know, because you were asking, for instance, Jaybird, about the price of Mountain Dew. You go one place and it's almost double as it was at another. And Melissa had said, yeah, prices are based on purchasing power. The more store purchases, wholesale means cheaper for them and then their markup for their profit. If their cost is high, then our is ours is going to be higher. So use every loyalty app you can to save. Yes. Loyalty apps, members, clubs, join them all. Okay. They all have an app now. You can put it right on your phone. They all have coupons. Use them. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday on the show, we were talking about how some of the Amazon stores, I don't know if they had it here, where it's just you walk out and somehow it knows what your bill is and you get charged. Uh, and they got rid of that. They're not going to go that route. So it's almost like a step back on technology, which how often does that happen? It seems like you're always being force-fed new tech. But um, they're going to a dash card idea. And Cesar said, yeah, it's extremely similar to what Walmart offers. If you are a Walmart Plus member, you can use your Walmart app to scan items as you put them into your cart. Then at the register, the employee or the self-checkout person, you present a QR code, and then they'll finish the transaction and take the payment. Walmart has been doing this for a few years, I believe, since COVID started to take off. Okay. If you find that to be beneficial, I guess you either do it all at once or you do it as you go. I mean, is it really saving time? They had one of those stores at the airport, and when you walked into it, you scanned your credit card, and then there's like 87 cameras in the ceiling watching you and seeing what you do. And then when you walk out, there's no checkout. It just knows what you took. And Rocco loved it. But I was like, I don't know. This is a little sketch. Yeah. I don't know. It just made me feel weird. I want to go and I want to scan my item. I want to see the receipt. I want to see the total. Because a lot of times it's in the system wrong. And then you got to call somebody over and say, that's not your advertised price. And yes, I will call somebody over to save anything a dollar or more. (laughs) <laughs> I will. Any more, yeah. Uh, hey, you save uh, a couple bucks here and there. It adds up to a cocktail, right? It does. Yeah. And I'm looking for that margarita. That's right. Cynthia had said, uh, yeah, you were talking about the cell phone tower in Alapata today. That dude climbed up middle of the night. They said he was climbing from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. I mean, he's lucky he didn't fall off that thing. Hey, crazy. And then he was just ripping wires and throwing them down. Somebody's like, uh, who are you? He's like, oh, I work for whatever it was, T-Mobile. I work for the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia said, yeah, my ex-husband builds cell phone towers, and that's his tower. <gasps> my son Jerry works for him, and he called me yesterday morning. He said, Mom, you're not going to believe this. There is a fucking lunatic on top of the tower in Miami. No. He's got a Bible, and he's destroying the wires, and he's taking out the service for T-Mobile. Dang. He was instructed to haul ass down to Miami to meet with the entire Miami-Dade Police Department and the face of the company that owns the tower. He's 21, by the way. And the best part is that the guy climbed up, did the damage, and he couldn't climb down because he was so exhausted from climbing up. My son didn't leave Miami until 8 p.m. last night. Wow. Can I get a Jerry chant? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. 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 It's a great story, though, that you're so involved. Yeah. How about that? I got an email here from Robert. He said, I was listening to your piece uh, about stations continuing to stay local, and it breaks my heart to see this happening on such a level. You guys are absolutely right. And as a KBJ Nationer, it kills me to see suits forced out, but I am in the same boat I'm a single father of two boys working 70 plus hours a week and will be homeless by the end of the month. Oh, no. Nonetheless, I just wanted you guys to know that I am a KBJ lifer and you have more support out here than you think. Keep holding it down. Three of you are the baddest mofos I know. Much love, Robert. Yeah. Good luck, man. Honestly, it's anything we can do to find side hustles or ideas or cost saving things. Just we'll keep 
Throwing we, that stuff out there. Try help everybody, man. Everybody's just scratching and clawing. We could put up like a little thing too, like roommates wanted, roommates needed, yeah, yeah. and maybe like a network of KBJ Nationers that all need a place to stay can start forming like communes. Well, that's kind of happened with us, you know, talking about uh, our fight with suits is finding him side hustles, finding him other housing opportunities. And so we've been passing, thank people have been sending some of those in. And I'm passing them off to suits and yes. exploring. So thank you guys. You are doing that. We're getting it to him and I'm letting him handle his own business people have sent him job ideas yeah, home yeah. ideas mm-hmm. you guys have really stepped up trying to keep suits in florida and we appreciate it yeah but uh you know i i I'd do that for anybody yeah. and if we could do that um any, any word we can spread of somebody who's got a place or whatever we'll, we'll do that we'll put it out there for like you. a little you know a tradio but on like a website yeah. If you need this, mm-hmm. go here. If you have this, go here. And everybody just help each other. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's great. To me, that's what I think local radio does. You know, yeah. They talk about little challenges in the community, and they try to help people out in the community that are going through struggles. Your ESPN syndicated guy out of New York can't help you find an apartment in West Palm Beach. Yeah. Absolutely. Fuck that guy. Uh, Chaz said, I found out through your ATS podcast on Wednesday that uh, Josh Cohen's radio show was axed. This uh, brought back a lot of memories for me. I used to live in South Florida, and during my time living there, I would listen to the radio more than I would watch television. My job had a lot of downtime and driving, and this was probably 10 to 15 years ago, if not longer. I'd listen to you guys in the morning, the Love Docs after, and Josh's show after that. It saddens me to know that two of the three shows I spent formative years listening to are no longer on the terrestrial radio. I never met you guys or Josh. I did meet Rich and Glenn, and they could not have been nicer guys. I know it's probably a very niche niche topic, and it's been asked before, but have you guys ever considered writing some kind of memoir book about your time in South Florida radio or maybe doing some kind of one-off podcast where you can talk about or vent on the air about some of the crazy, entertaining things you guys have come across? Every day. <laughs> oh, we're keeping a journal, baby. Every day. There will be a time when all the tales can be told. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some of you guys are one of the last remaining OGs still in the game. It'd be something I'd highly be interested in. Yeah, you know, honestly, Chaz, I think that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. And, uh, would it, I, I think the it, answer's yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 it's already in my notes. <laughs> Bitch has got notes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a great idea, but yeah, it's, it's, it is happening. You've said all along, like, I feel like I'm an episode of The Office. I'm working on yeah. a script about radio, about what the, I mean, it's taken me a long time, but I think it could be good with some of that shit he's talking about. I think mm-hmm. you're right. Yeah, honestly, I, I think, too, uh, aside from just our own stories, it would be kind of cool to do a show and get some of the old dogs together to talk the stories and see if anybody's interested to put out. I mean, you know, from Josh Cohen and Mo and Sally and uh, you know, maybe even Paul would do it, Castronovo we can do, and uh, Jennifer Ross. And, the you know, old love doctors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See if uh, any of them would do it. That would be kind of cool, just, you know, tell the stories and maybe have it interactive to some point. That that would be pretty cool. I you know maybe we'll reach out to them and just see if they'd have any interest in it. They may be like ah fuck off, but you know. The best stories are going to be the ones from the people that no longer work for the corporations or the man. Oh, that's what, I, and those are the stories I want. Yeah, I think me and Kevin are working on two different kind of projects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of our stuff will not see the light of day until we are no until longer yeah, employed by the man. Yeah, because it's just it's. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll let you know, too. I mean, if you are a fan of uh, uh, Josh Cohen and the home team, he's, you know, he's still still doing it around. It's just going to be uh, digital stuff. So, you know, he even sent me a text. He said, you know, we could stream again as soon as tomorrow if I choose. Um, I think he's still kind of trying to figure out and how it's going to be popping up and uh, where. But, but he's it's... trying to be positive in his text yeah. message to us and I give him all the credit in the world for that, you know. Yeah. you got to pivot and you got to remain positive and you got to bet on yourself and yeah. that's what he's doing and so good for him. Yeah, so, you know, you'll, he'll, he'll be around in some form I mean, that's just it and that's why I keep using the word terrestrial radio on 106.3 FM being broadcast. That's That part is done, but, you know, still looking at other options. You're always going to be a lot safer if you have an audience, even when you get fired. If, if, if you have an audience that loves you and that wants to follow you, they're going to follow you. Yeah, absolutely. 
So that is the uh, ultimate plan, and that's why we are so thankful for everybody who is a loyal fan of KBJ uh, because, yeah, that, that gives us some clout and a little bit of security and confidence in saying, okay, maybe we can keep this thing going for a little oh, while. Oh, not to be pandering, we have a very special and unique audience. We yeah. People legit are so passionate. We are, Talk about counting your blessings. Be, been in this game for 20 years. I don't see many, many uh, radio shows that have people who spend the kind of time and energy that they do for our show. I mean, mm-hmm. we've we've grown up together. Yeah. And when they come out, they come out to party. They yeah. are like us. KVJ Nation is just fun. They want to have a good time. They want to drink. They want to just let it all hang out. Well, I love that. If you're if you're in the po- if you listen to the After the Show podcast, that means you are in the the club. You're you're a friend, even if we've never met. We're a friend that hasn't met yet. You're a pirate. Well, you understand <laughs> us. You get our you're moods, like us. whether good or bad. We have good moods. We have bad moods. But you, you're you're riding it out. You're riding the war with us, and, and we're very fortunate. Mm-hmm. Amen. Absolutely. No, we are. Count our blessings every day. And uh, this is kind of the cool stuff, too. We see KBJ Nationers uh, go on and do something. Tammy sent this in. Uh, This is uh, a photo of her daughter, Serenity. She's uh, now 17, but that was her at our beach cleanup, KBJ Volunteer Army event. Aww. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, she's from Jupiter. And uh, just got to give her a little bit of support because she has been on The Voice this season. Okay. Oh, she that's got, amazing. She got a four-chair turnaround. Four-chair? Uh, in, in her battle round, yeah. She starts the knockouts on Monday. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, this uh, I got this yesterday, so I guess this coming Monday. Catch her tonight, which I guess might have been last night. So last night she threw out the first pitch at Roger Dean Stadium for opening night. That's awesome. Aww. So Serenity Arce. Yes, A R C E R C R C. Got to keep an eye out for that, and we'll get audio and we'll play that. I've been kind of keeping track because uh, we've had, I think, a couple of girls grew up here and then moved away, but we have also had, you know, some some girls that uh, I think four from South Florida that are on either American Idol or they're on The Voice, and I guess they run up at the same time. Is that correct? Sometimes I, 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 think that, I think they are, yeah. I think Voice is going on. I think American Idol is going on. I, the right only now. thing I can I, I can answer confidently is that Katy Perry is very cringy to listen to. Oh, <laughs> I'm saying as a judge, Virginia, as a ju- Oh, whatever. You agree with me? I do, but I feel bad for her because I really like her. Why the fuck do you feel bad for Katy Perry? I don't know. She's living high on the hog. <laughs> She's got gigs left and right. Mm-hmm. I feel zero. Seriously, why do you feel bad for her? I don't think she knows how cringy she is. I, someone's got to tell her. <laughs> I'm not telling her. You tell her. <laughs> yeah, and then on uh, American Idol, um, we got a uh, 16-year-old out of Boca, Victoria Johnson, was on there. I got to check and see where she is. Dang, she we got first round. kids on every show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at us. Uh-huh. Ashley sent this in. Jaber was talking about the river making music, Muscle Shoals. And I think those, it feels like it's a Leonard Skinner type of thing. And I thought there were a lot of bands that I knew that, you know, would go to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and there's well, the river that comes down. It, it, tons of bands and, mm-hmm. and solo artists. And we're yeah. talking legendary Rolling people. Rolling Stones but, had but some stuff. We're talking for a, a long period mm-hmm. of time. This, yeah. this singing river was something that was reported back in olden times that people would go in the 50s and 60s and 70s and report on that. The, yeah. These feelings and this song that would come from this beautiful angelic woman, it sounded like. A, mm-hmm. a spirit, if you will. Yeah, and they would write the song from the inspiration what they heard from the river. They said inspiration came from the mud almost dang yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It, 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 it is amazing and it is kind of fascinating that you know sometimes too you have music that comes from a region and it just almost it's got the soul of that region in it oh i, I believe that we really don't uh we, we don't uh, we take for granted the power of nature and what mm. it can do for inspiration and just for clarity we're not we're not out in nature enough and there's parts of this world i do think have more uh, uh magic to it for creativity and things like that 
Ashley was saying that on Netflix they have that William Shatner show, The Unexplained, and they had an episode about people that can taste or hear colors. It was crazy. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but there's a deaf man that had his other senses that would pick up sound as if he could feel sound from miles away. And then there was a group of kids that could read new books while being completely blindfolded. Scientists don't know really how it works. It's just something that can happen. It was absolutely fascinating. And it's almost like there is some kind of just spiritual, mystical connection that can happen through sound and colors and everything else. I also think we just haven't tapped into everything. Oh, no doubt. Uh, Not even close. <laughs> what we don't know could fill a book. Yep. Not Maybe you should close. go up to that Muscle Shoals place on your next little driving adventure. Already thought of Oh, me and my sister Becky are flying up to Alabama to see my niece, uh, Brittany, who's getting uh-huh. married uh, soon. What so, town? Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure exactly. I think it's right outside of the Huntsville area. Oh, well, then perfect. That's where Muscle Shoals is. Yeah. yeah. I'm not good with town names. So Huntsville. I could be wrong. Tomorrow I'll come in and go, it's, that, no, it's, it's, it's Dothan, Alabama. That's right. Well, Dothan's close, too. Dothan's close to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Candace uh, sent an email. I was talking about uh, the new study out of Stanford about keto, the diet, uh, not only slimming people down, but also helping their mental health. Candace had said, uh, yeah, it's um, just to clarify, it's specifically a high fat, low carb diet. Ketosis is a metabolic state that occurs when your body burns fat for energy instead of glucose. So there you go. Thank you very much. And then Stasi said, yeah, you guys were talking about the benefits of it this morning. I want to share my personal story. My husband was diagnosed with insulin resistance and high blood sugar years ago, and the doctor suggested keto. Although I didn't need to lose the weight or have high blood sugar myself, I joined him on the diet just to be supportive. My husband lost weight and his blood sugar is normal, which is an expected result. I used to suffer with extreme anxiety, and I was in therapy for over two years. And about six months after being on keto, my anxiety decreased significantly. And now, after over two years on the diet, I am anxiety-free. I didn't think it could help me with my mental health, but it certainly did. Wow. Anastasia sent that in. How about that? Fascinating. I wonder if that would work if we dropped you in a tank full of sharks. <laughs> Where your anxiety is. <laughs> we dropped you in a tank full of barracudas. We, I think it was one barracuda, and it didn't bite me. And I, I think the barracuda is more anxious than Jaybird. It was, because I got out, because I thought it was hitting me. Or, we found the most bitch-ass barracuda. Well, I still had to go to the hospital, because when I was getting out, I sliced my hand on the fucking cage. I had to get stitches. <laughs> Barracuda wanted nothing to do with you. The cage, however, was out for blood. Who would have thought? I'm more dangerous to myself than the barracuda. <laughs> <laughs> Hamburger hands. Uh, Doug had said you were talking about when did the term cock start meaning penis. And he said it's been found in writing from like the 1400s, even the 1300s. It's because the rooster or cock was an ancient sign of male virility, as was the bull. Ah, and I understand that. So why do we have to make it called cocking? You know, what I'm I'm saying that part. Uh, get that white cock, c- cock that area. You know, what I'm saying Even cock, but it sounds like cock though. <laughs> yeah, how you? It, it's all on how it's you a pronounce you. it. You gotta, yeah. you gotta make sure the cock. cock. It sounds like cock. It, there's so. cock, and then there's cock. Yeah, it just sound like you're Australian saying cock. Or British. Yeah, suck my cock. Kind of what it is. It's, it's <laughs> like you're saying cock with an Australian accent. <laughs> Is how you say what you put around a window frame. Well, and the funniest thing is when you go work on the uh, job for Habitat for Humanity and they tell you you have to use nothing but black cock. Yeah, it sounds like you're saying cock. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I can't be the only one that it's thinks bigger, this. It's bigger. It's better. I would just, if I was inventing cock, I would say, <laughs> hey, maybe we shouldn't say something or something. Or it sounds just we like, need a different word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is too close, so but like, it's so fun. But, but, you open up a, re- a restaurant called Ponus. Kind of sounds like penis. <laughs> Cesar sent another email. He's talking about comedies 
and movies. Do you think that there's ever going to be more movies like Step Brothers and your American Pie or Tropic Thunder? Hollywood seems pretty scared to do a fun and enjoyable comedy. They're terrified of the newest keyword, take somebody down. I think they are talking about doing a Step Brothers. I've heard about another Step Brothers. Yeah, so I, I think there is definitely still content being made that's like that. But when you start getting into them big studios like your Disney and all, all of them, they don't want to take the chances of any of that stuff. Cause, so they have died down. But I think there's a pushback. And I think you're going to start seeing more privately made movies where people yeah. want to run it themselves. Kind of what you see with m music where people are going, I'm not going to even try to get a record label. I'm going to go on the Internet, try to start my own shit and, and take care of my own career. Now, it's a lot harder that way, but you at least are controlling what you want to do. There's no one saying, yeah, you can't shoot that person in that scene because it's too violent. You're able to do your art. You can't have a song called I Love Caulk. You can, but yeah. when you own it, you can do a song. Exactly. And that's what I think if you really want to make what you want to make, that's sexy to you. But if, you know, mm -hmm. if you care about making the money and getting into that Holly weird world, you're going to have to make you're going to have to make some changes. Yeah, we're, we're, we got to get in the lab and do suck my cock. Uh, anytime you want to come over. <laughs> We're odd in a way as a species that it just feels like the pendulum always swings radically from one side to the next and we can't find what is the right balance of it. I think that it will swing back. I think there's a lot of pushback on what has kind of happened. I think, you know, he was referencing my little uh, tirade yesterday about uh, the person who kind of uh, critiqued my language. And I think that there are people that are starting to feel like, all right, I, we're, we're taking some of the PC stuff a little too far. And I think you're going to start seeing a little bit of a pushback. Well, I mean, it, it, it all depends on what you're able to handle. If you're able to do something yeah. and it's going to get heat mm -hmm. and you stand by what you do or say yeah. and people are still giving you heat and you can go to bed at night, well, you win at that point. What usually works, and I remember some of the shocking words in the comedians that were coming out in the late 70s and the 80s, society was, in a sense, a little prudish at the time. And so comedy, it works well when it surprises and shocks. And so when your society is set up to that standard, then when somebody says some of those things, you're like, oh, my gosh. And you're like, I shouldn't laugh. It's so taboo. But you do. And in a sense, I would say our society is kind of getting ripe right now for a great comedy for a comedian to come through and just really kind of take it by the balls again and do that kind of stuff and say, oh, my gosh, you can't say that kind of stuff. And to an extent, Dave Chappelle is well, doing some of that stuff very successful. Look at your top comedians that are widely popular. They all say what they want and they yeah. don't give a shit about yeah. that. I mean, how many times can you really cancel Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. it's never happened it's never right. happened yeah and I said that's why the comedy scene is booming right now they're expressing themselves and they're having no fear and I think a lot of people are like yeah you go for it because I'm tired of people trying to shame me because I didn't have bad intent but I used a word and all of a sudden I'm made to feel really terrible about myself it is a boom of comedy yeah it's a lot and, and there's some really good com uh, comedians out there but with anything when there's such an oversaturation yeah you do get some shit mm-hmm yeah, so I, th I think you're seeing a little bit of it now. I think you'll probably see even more. Uh, interesting thought here from Jeremy. He said, hey, could you guys switch it up this weekend and have Virginia review a movie that Jaybird recommends? <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good idea. What a twist. I will absolutely do that after the Crawfish Fest. I love it. It's a great idea. I don't have time right now. Gotcha. Yeah. That's next weekend. So in a couple weeks. You can yeah, do it. I'll, I'll do it because I do want to see The Outsiders. He's been telling me forever to see that. And I've written that down like 10 different times. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to see The Usual Suspects. But oh. then Kevin watched it. And then he's like, eh, yeah, it's all right. Well, it kind of. Did you tell me The Outsiders? I told you. I told you 11,000 movies. And yes, both of those are on the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I kinda, honestly, when I talk to you about movies, I kind of. I feel like an outsider. Oh, <laughs> I will. I'll watch them because I need to have some diversity in my programming. And I'm getting kind of sick of Real Housewives and Real Housewives and Real Housewives. I want to switch it up. Well, I've also understand too. I there's a type of movie or I, I don't even know what you call it that I like, and I understand it's not for everybody. I mean, people are bagging on me hard for dissing Roadhouse so hard. Mm. I just I, I don't like those aren't my kind of movies. I like cheesy where you go, holy. Fuck, they wrote that? Yeah. Really uh, right. You, you like know. terrible movies. Yeah, but they're terrible yeah. with charm and heart. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. weird. I, it's mm -hmm. a hard thing to explain. Okay. 
Well, taking a quick glimpse at our All Things Awful bracket. Right now, the two juggernauts, number one seeds from the 64 we started with of the worst things in life. Cancer is beating murder 67 to 33 percent. Cancer's beating murder. Wow, cancer is okay. beating murder. I yeah. would say it's a bit of an upset. I think more people have been touched by cancer than murder. And I think that's why it would win. Okay. Well, we're going to see what happens. We'll crown a champion on Monday. You can go vote right now at kbjshow.com. We'll check in with it again tomorrow to see how it's doing. All right. Weekend is on deck. We'll see you all back here tomorrow. Goodbye.